I have briefly shown a clip from this murder a year ago in one of my videos, so some of you may recognise it, but I didn't go into too much detail, and I believe that this case deserves to be covered properly. As far as I'm aware, this case has not been covered by any other true crime YouTuber, but I do warn you, the video you're about to watch is incredibly distressing and upsetting. Before I start, I just want to thank today's sponsor, Hunter Killer, which is a company I've wanted to work with since I've started. They are the murder mystery subscription game, and with each delivery, you have to sift through documents and pieces of evidence to try and eliminate the suspects and hunt the killer. And the best way to describe it is it's basically like an escape room that you can do in the comfort of your own home. Each month you'll get a box filled with documents and evidence that you'll need to piece the story together. And it tells a proper immersive story. And you get to learn the backstories of each of the characters and how they link to the victim. And you get to watch as the, as the storyline unfolds. And it's such a satisfying feeling when you get that little light bulb moment too and you kind of figure out something. And if you're an antisocial person like me, it's a great way to have a unique little date night without leaving the house. So you can just crack open some red rum and dig into the cold case. And it's cool because it's something to look forward to and I got weirdly excited when man came to the post. And you can even you can do it by yourself or you can do it with friends, family or a partner. And it's a good little gift for somebody who loves true crime too. And when you buy it, you can also join the Hunter Killer spoiler free community and you can chat about uh, the case that you're trying to solve and true crime as well. So a big thanks to Hunter Killer for supporting true crime on YouTube. And right now, you can go to hunterkiller.com forward slash disturbing and use disturbing for 20% off the first box that you get. There'll be a link in the description and pinned in the comments too. So go and check them out because they're genuinely one of the coolest companies I've ever seen. So honestly, thank you so much. And now, on to the video. This case takes place on the 22nd of July, 2018 in Sao Paulo, Brazil. On this day, a woman named Tatiana Spinsner went on a night out with her husband of five years. Tatiana was a 29-year-old woman. She was incredibly intelligent and worked as an attorney. Her husband was a man named Louis Manvela. Louis was a university biology lecturer and a jiu-jitsu specialist. The couple married in 2013, and on the outside, things seemed good. They were a good-looking couple with promising careers ahead of them, but things aren't always what they seem. Tatiana's close friends would often spot bruises on her arms, and when these friends questioned the bruising, Tatiana would just brush them off as accidents and would change the topic of conversation. In reality, Louis was an incredibly controlling person. He would take Tatiana's hard-earned money every month and keep it for himself. He would also cut up her clothes that he deemed to be too revealing. He was known to emotionally manipulate her too. If he was angered by her, he would call her all manner of names to lower her self-esteem and would ignore her for days. When the couple finished their evening together, they can be seen driving back to the apartment on CCTV. The footage shows the car speeding down the street and then stopping abruptly. If you look closely, you can see the footage of Lewis striking Tatiana with some force. The argument apparently broke out after Tatiana became angry as she had found images of other women on Lewis's phone. The next piece of footage we can see is the couple driving up to the parking lot of the apartment complex where he drags her from the car and pushes her against it. And what follows from this is one of the most disturbing pieces of footage I've seen. What you're about to see are the final moments of Tatiana's life. As you saw in the clip, Tatiana desperately tried to flee from Lewis, but unfortunately, he caught up to her. He then took her to the apartment and continued the attack 
before throwing her from the balcony. One of the most shocking aspects of the video is that between the time in the elevator and the time when Tatiana is shown falling from the balcony is the 15 minutes that they were inside the apartment that weren't captured on CCTV. Neighbours said they could hear desperate screams for help. The emergency services responded to a call that a woman had been seen falling from a building. Despite Tatiana crying out and screaming, not a single person tried to physically help her or stop the attacker. I guess it's sometimes easy to say that you would help in a situation like that, but I do find it sad that not a single person tried to help her, and why multiple people didn't get together and do something. It was a big enough complex and there must have been quite a few people who heard the commotion. The police arrived and found blood on the sidewalk of the building, but they saw no sign of the body. Lewis had actually gone down and dragged her body back into the elevator and brought her back into the apartment. And as you can see in the footage, there's a realization that he is in serious trouble. He can also be seen cleaning blood from the elevator. Witnesses in the streets claim to have seen Lewis in a frantic state outside the building. They saw him run over to Tatiana's lifeless body and shout, my love, wake up, repeatedly. He was arrested on suspicion of murder. The police found him 185 miles from the city. He tried to make an escape, but thankfully he crashed on the motorway. He told the investigators that he was not guilty, claiming that Tatiana had jumped from the building on her own accord and that he had no part in pushing or throwing her over. The investigators then asked him why he was fleeing if he was innocent. He then told them the obvious lie, that he ran because he was so disturbed by seeing his wife jump from the balcony. He claimed that he didn't remember what happened when asked about the beatings that were caught on the CCTV cameras. Lewis's defence was that she committed suicide by jumping. He said that when they got into the flat, they argued some more, and then she got onto the balcony and threatened to jump, and then she actually followed through with a threat. But the post-mortem showed injuries consistent with strangulation. They managed to conclude that Tatiana was already dead when she was thrown from the balcony. She showed injuries that she would have received in those 15 minutes inside the apartment before being thrown. Medical reports show that she had broken bones in her neck that are consistent with strangulation. Lewis tried to claim that he and Tatiana were in a loving, happy relationship, but one of her friends disclosed a conversation that she had with Tatiana in a text message. And in this text message, Tatiana tells her friend that she is scared of her husband and that she feels like he hates her. So far, the trial has been postponed three times, due to the pandemic and some trouble with the lawyers. Lewis is still protesting his innocence, and there are some witnesses that did actually say that Tatiana had one leg over the balcony threatening to jump. Another person claimed to have heard her scream as she fell, which would mean she wasn't dead when she fell. But it's important to remember that eyewitness testimonies aren't always too reliable. The videos with these claims from the witnesses are available on Lewis's personal Instagram if you wish to see them for yourself. It appears that someone he knows has taken over his personal Instagram to prove that he didn't throw her and that she threw herself. Something to keep in mind is that he claimed he didn't remember what he did in the elevator as he had some kind of blackout, but he claimed to remember the events before she threw herself from the balcony which is rather convenient for him. The death of Tatiana has helped to bring awareness to the violence women face in Brazil. There's an old saying in Brazil, which translates to don't stick a spoon in, which means not to stir up and get involved in the drama of other couples. A campaign was launched to break this, called Stick a Spoon In, in hopes to encourage people to help stop domestic violence if they see it or hear it. Brazil has the seventh highest rate of femicide in the world, with more than double that of the United States. And sadly, 
Even when women report violence in Brazil, the police often lack the resources and training to adequately deal with the situation. Brazil has 497 stations that can deal with crimes against women. This equates to one for every 210,000 women, and most of them close in the evenings and on weekends, when domestic violence is most likely to occur. Tatiana's case is unfortunately one of just many. This just so happened to be captured on camera for the world to see. So hopefully, the fact that this was captured will maybe encourage some people to leave their abusive partners and maybe save some lives. As the trial keeps being delayed, I'm not sure how long this could go on for. But the lawyer prosecuting Lewis said he was confident of the conviction and he thinks he could be sentenced to more than 30 years in prison.